All right, and welcome to Special Right Triangles, level two. Okay, in our very first example, we want to find the length of x. I know that's kind of a sloppy x, but there it is. Now notice we have a right triangle, and one of our angles is 30 degrees. Well, that would imply that our other angle must be 60 degrees, and so we actually have our 30, 60, 90 special right. Now let me go ahead and kind of show you our template for 30, 60, 90. Remember, we know our short side is always x, our long side or our hypotenuse is always 2x, and our third side is always x squared, so 3. Now what does this really mean? It means that going from the short side to the long side, you are multiplying by 2, and conversely, it means that when going from the long side to the short side, you are dividing by 2. When going from the short side to the third side, you're multiplying by the square root of 3, and conversely, when going from the third side to the short side, you are dividing by the square root of 3. Okay, so this is where we kind of run into a problem here. When we are given the third side, but we're not given a radical with it, um, it's really saying that the radical is in there somewhere. So like, what do I mean by that? I mean that if I were to say x squared root of 3 is equal to 12, well, you know, 12 is containing the square root of 3 within itself. Okay, so how do I go from there to the short side? Well, it's pretty simple. Kind of looking at this template over here, we see that to go from the third side to the short side, we're going to divide by the square root of 3. We're going to take it out of the 12. And so we'd write 12 over the square root of 3. Now from here, I'm going to kind of show you how to work to the right on this. And this is a little bit tricky. There's actually a little bit of Algebra 2 involved here. But I'm going to give you all the simplest version of it. In Algebra 2, you learn you can never have a radical in the denominator. You just can't do it. So how do you get rid of that radical? Well, we have a cool little trick. If the radical, the square root of 3, is in the denominator, we'll simply multiply both the bottom and the top by the square root of 3. Now, I'm only going to show this one time, all right? And from here on out, I'm going to accept that you know it. So remember, fractions are top times top, and 12 times the square root of 3 is, the tw is 12 square roots of 3. That's easy. But on the bottom, Anything times itself is really being squared. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is really the square root of 3 squared. Well, guys, what do we know about square and a square root? They are opposites and they cancel. So this really becomes 12 square roots of 3 over 3. From this point forward, if I ever multiply a square root of a number times the square root of itself, I'm simply just going to take the square root away. But I want you to know that this is the in-between step that I'll always be skipping from this point forward. Now from here, you have to ask yourself, well, what is 12 divided by 3? Can that reduce? And obviously, I'm going to kind of erase this here so we have a little, a little room. And obviously, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we have 4 square roots of 3. x is equal to 4 square roots of 3. Now, by the way, if I wanted to go from the short side to the long side, remember, I simply multiply by 2, so what's 4 times 2? Well, that would be 8 squared to 3. Okay, let's move on to our next example. Okay, in example 2, we're shown a triangle that has a right angle and a 45 degree angle. We know now that that is actually always going to be a 45, 45, 90. And it turns out in this one, we're given the base. Now, what's the rule for a 45, 45, 90 triangle? Well, the rule is that our two legs of the triangle, because this is ultimately an isosceles triangle, the rule is that both legs are x and the base is x squared of 2. So notice we're given the base here as 10, and what we're really saying is we're saying, hey, you know, 10 is actually equal to x squared of 2. So when you write it out like an equation, it only makes sense that to solve for x, you would divide both sides by the square root of 2. Okay. So let me just kind of write this, though, a little bit, a little bit differently. And here's what I want you all to find. I want you to find out what x is, and I want you to find out what y is. So what do we just say? When going from this base, we know for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we're going to divide by the square root of 2. 
Now recall, we cannot have a radical in the denominator. So I multiply both the bottom and the top by the square root of 2. Now what do we know? We know the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is simply 2. And on top, we'll have 10 square roots of 2. And the last thing you ask yourself is, can 10 be divided by 2? It can, so that becomes 5 square roots of 2. 5 square roots of 2. And recall, since x and x are the same, y must also be 5 square roots of 2. All right, guys, we're going to go try one final example. So come on with me, and let's take your notes. Okay, here in example three, we're showing a triangle with a right angle and a 60 degree angle. We know that this must imply that the other angle is 30. So we clearly have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now notice I've kind of drawn this one a little bit funky because I think sometimes students really struggle with the orientation of shapes. So let's say I now have this 60, 30, 90 triangle right here. Remember kind of our template is x, the long side of the hypotenuse is 2x, and our third side is x squared, so 3. Now notice, once again, I'm giving you the third side here, but I'm not giving it to you with the radical. We're saying that 24 contains the radical, that 24 is really equal to x squared, so 3. And much like in our last one, remember, to go from this third side to the short side, we have to divide both sides by the square root of 3. OK, that's fine. So what is 24, oh, weird, you know, we'll, we'll keep this weird color. What's 24 divided by the square root of 3? Well, remember, we want to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. By the way, that's called rationalizing the denominator. And so on the top, 24 times the square root of 3 is 24 square root of 3. And on the bottom, we know that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply 3. Now lastly, guys, of course, we want to reduce 24 over 3 if possible. And what is 24 divided by 3? Well, that is 8 squared of 3. So here are right, 8 squared of 3. Also notice that going from x to 2x, we simply multiply by 2. Well, 8 times 2 is 16 squared of 3. And we've found our two missing sides. All right, y'all, I hope this helps, and I'll catch y'all in our next video.